third time tonight. <laughs> My name is Phil Kohler, uh, and we are going to play yet another game. Um, I'm being joined by Austin Walker. Hey. Keith Carberry. Hey. Janine Hawkins. How's it going? It's going so good! <laughs> um, new games. There's a lot of cool games to play. Uh, mm -hmm. So this, this one we're checking out uh, is named The Rapture is Here, and you will be forcibly removed from your home, or it's for short... Uh, trihebrophehe, <laughs> um, which is what I what people usually people usually call it the the acronym, or right. or that's how they type it on like Twitter and such because it's such a long mm -hmm. name. Um, so that's usually how I see it. It's confusing and terrifying, and uh, we're gonna find out what it is. The title screen looks amazing. I think it looks yeah. so good. Yeah, I, I like I'm. The, I, I think this game in general looks really good. Okay, I've really I've, like I've never seen anything from this game, so I have no idea what's coming. Yeah, so this just came out. It's completely free. Um, my understanding is that it only takes like about 20 minutes to play, um, and I think I think dude who made it is hanging out in the chat with us. So, oh, really? if yeah, we have take, any questions, take you can five five one one. I really like that when you say the acronym. Oh yeah, name, it's it sounds like the dude from Twin Peaks speaking backwards. Sure. Well, and it sounds it sounds like a Lovecraft <laughs> thing. Look it's at the oh does. man, look at the color and the way it's like. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So good. Uh, tag of five five one one in the chat. Also, like I said, he he is. Connor Sherlock, the creator of the game, and he also just linked to uh, where you can grab the game yourself if you want to play it. I'll include that link in the uh, the info on the YouTube version of this when that goes up. Um, but for the time being, I think we're gonna we can sit about. Let's see what we game by Connor Sherlock. Please consider purchasing the soundtrack. The soundtrack sounds really cool so far. I might actually have to turn it down just a little bit. Um, but I think there's some voiceover, uh, and you can see here Josh Smith, Call of Cthulhu. That's our good friend J Smith OTI. Um, hey. So let's uh, let's let's jump in. All right, shift to run, mouse to look. Pretty basic stuff. Oh boy. Oh, I played this. <laughs> Wait, you really? What? How do you? I'd forgotten. I played Jesus. it. Um, I played it in a browser. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a you Unity can, game. It's, on it's a Unity yeah. game. So yeah. you, can, you can play it in browser. Um, we're gonna run towards this tower first, I think, and, and try to. Oh god! Every time I look at that, it makes like a huge like booming sound, which is terrifying. That's awesome. I can't you hear need, it. But I'm did sure you great. like this when you played it? Uh, it made me motion sick. I liked what Perfect. I did play, but I had to. I had to stop eventually because I think I think it's the head the head movement just. Uh, you said that you get that a lot with games. Um, it it depends. It, it a lot of it depends on like the field of view, and games where you can change that are great. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a lot of if the field of view is very narrow and there's head bobbing, I I've got like maybe fifteen minutes before I start to get a sort of nauseous Natural headache from it. Whoa. Which with my uncle procured the instruments from the laboratories of Brown University and the Cranston Street Armory. Instinctively assume direction of our venture. You guys might need to turn off the volume for this. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Turn up what volume for what? The game volume so we can hear the narration. Oh, I didn't even know that we could do that. In the stream, not in oh. Skype. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because there's just straight up narration. Towards this creepy house. Sure, this won't be anything sketchy going on here. <laughs> Purchaser says, "Go to the J Smith part, wherever that is." I don't know which one that is, so we're gonna get there eventually. I wanna, I wanna check out everything if we can. Might need to do it across multiple playthroughs. What I heard in my youth oh. about the shunned house was merely that people died there. At Good friend Ali says, I'm very spooked by this. Oh, the music is so good. Hold on. If it's inspired by Lovecraft, it's usually hold on. either... Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to be able to have people hear the narration. Mm -hmm. so. I'll try and tell you guys when there's narration going on. Okay, it looks like there's another yellow one over here, so let's continue this, this uh, storyline. Sing. 
It looks like this thing is getting bigger, so... I love how the music changes when you look at this thing. Or, like, how it adds, like, its own little... It's so fucking creepy. Oh, that UFO sound. Yeah. That UFO sound. It's terrifying. Okay, here's a, here's a narration bit. In short, it seemed to my uncle and me that an incontrovertible array of facts pointed to some lingering influence in the shunned house, traceable to one or another of the ill-favored French settlers of two centuries before, and still operative through rare and unknown laws of atomic and electronic motion. That the family had possessed an abnormal affinity for outer circles of entity, dark spheres which for a normal folk held only repulsion and terror, their recorded history seemed to prove. Okay. Oh my god. Man, I really want to play this game. Yeah, this is super <laughs> cool. <laughs> and this also makes me want to say, like, like I said, that dude who made it, Connor Sherlock, hanging out in the chat with us. Man, I hope you're working on more game stuff and stuff that's, like, even bigger than this, because I would love to see. Clearly, you know how to make cool environments. All right, narration. To declare that we were not nervous on that rainy night of watching would be an exaggeration both gross and ridiculous. We were not, as I have said, in any sense childishly superstitious, but scientific study and reflection had taught us that the known universe of three dimensions embraces the merest fraction of the whole cosmos of substance and energy. In this case, an overwhelming preponderance of evidence from numerous authentic sources pointed to the tenacious... Uh, Connor in the chat says he is making some more stuff. Power. And so far as the human point of view is concerned, exceptional malignancy. That's good. Um, Richard is asking if the stuff is rewritten. Uh, Connor can answer that, but I think it's not... Yeah, like, I think it's, like, abridged Lovecraft stuff. Um, not, not direct... Full, full stories. So I don't know where the next yellow one is or if there is another yellow one. I'm just running through the woods now. That seems safe. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. What? That was... That was scary. Wait, did I miss what? something? What happened? It was just was some scary. lightning. Like a flash of lightning. Oh, okay. oh boy. Purple lightning. I thought it was like... I thought you said like... A miasmata creature. <laughs> Maybe that too. I don't know. Who knows? Who can say? Ted can say, probably. Yeah, that lightning burst is crazy. I just got to that in the stream chat. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks really good. More things need to be purple. Archaeotic says the flowers are getting redder over time. Yeah, that was totally... That was happening on the... Oh... That house reminds me of some of the houses in Pathologic, um, with stairs up to nothing. That house reminds me of a wall. Yeah, that too. There's some wall things going on. There's a creepy well. Nothing going on here. Love a good weird well. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in the chat, uh, Rakashi in the chat says, Connor, I totally had a dream about your game the other night. yellow over here. We're right by this red, but I, I think I'm going to ignore it and go for the yellow. <laughs> At least I think that's yellow. I think the thing that makes the environment in this game so 
effect, like, it's, there's like this sort of mood to the environment that you don't see in a lot of Unity games, especially. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, you have the mist and the, the combination mm -hmm. of the mist and the, the lighting, like, the really, really bright foreground and the really, really dark background. Yeah. Um, most of the Uni ga Unity games that I've seen haven't really done anything quite so dramatic or quite mm -hmm. so effective. Well, and, and, like, you cannot overstate the importance of having the object in the air. Um, yeah. That you can see from anywhere, at any distance you've traveled. Like, mm -hmm. that thing is looming over you, and that's not a thing that happens super often in and video like, games. And, like, literally blotting out the sun at this point. Like, yes. you can kind of yes. see where the sun is supposed to totally. be, but you can't quite see it. It is uh, big objects in games that are weird and alien are not and like they're an underused thing. Okay, it's here's, like, here's a. Is it an object or is it a hole? Here's a narration. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Such a thing was surely not a physical or biochemical impossibility in the light of newer science, which includes the theories of relativity and intraatomic action. One might easily imagine an alien nucleus of substance or energy, formless or otherwise kept alive by imperceptible or immaterial subtractions from the life force or bodily tissues and fluids of other or more palpably living things into which it penetrates and with whose fabric it sometimes completely merges itself. It might be actively hostile, or it might be dictated merely by blind motives of self-preservation. In any case, such a monster must of necessity be in our scheme of things an anomaly and an intruder whose extirpation forms a primary duty with every man not an enemy to the world's life, health, and sanity. Okay. Uh, says, uh, these are all basic free stock unity assets minus the house, which cost me $5. Yeah, that's really <laughs> interesting. Yeah, that is really interesting. He also did point community out earlier. Has a really good oh community, though. Mm -hmm. He also did point out earlier, which I probably should have paid attention to, that uh, I don't need to stand still while listening to that stuff. I'm just like, yeah. I don't want to run. I just want to like enjoy the. Yeah. Like, I'm just yeah. like, I, I'm standing still because otherwise I'm afraid I'll miss something because I. These stories are really cool and interesting. Mm -hmm. I love how because like, the environment is so interesting, but there's so little even going on on the plains. Yeah. Just like the fact that just looking at the grass and then the weird like light this like ascending to the sky in the distance mm -hmm. and those pillars and just like dilapidated houses what baffled us was our utter ignorance of the aspect in which we might encounter the thing no same person had ever seen it and few had Thomas ever seen it so hold on hold on hold on coming through hold the on. <laughs> energy from ethereal and inside the realm of substance or maybe partly material, some unknown and unequivocal mass of plasticity, capable of changing at will to nebulous approximations of the solid, liquid, gaseous, or tenuously unparticled states. The anthropomorphic patch of mold on the floor, the form of the yellowish vapor, and the curvature of the tree roots in some of the old tales all argued at least a remote and reminiscent connection with the human shape. But how representative or permanent that similarity might be, none could say with any kind of certainty. Is this yellow over here? I can't tell. Oh, there's yellow. I was wondering if um, do we know the name of the story that this this color was abridged from? I'm not parts sure. Of it sound familiar, but I'm not catching the whole thing because I don't know exactly when the narration's starting and stopping. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I'm sure Tech will tell us though. Like the orange ground there is so nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, narration coming up now. It occurred to us too that our venture was far from safe, for in what strength the thing might appear no one could tell. But we deemed the game worth the hazard and embarked on it alone and unhesitatingly, conscious that the seeking of outside aid would only expose us to ridicule and perhaps defeat our entire purpose. Such was our frame of mind as we talked, far into the night, till my uncle's growing drowsiness made me remind him to lie down for his two hours sleep. Uh, Keith, it's from The Shunned House, which I should have known, because they specifically mentioned The Shunned House several times. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's another narration right now. He had, he said, floated off from a very ordinary series of dream pictures into a scene whose strangeness was related to nothing he had ever read. 
It was of this world and yet not of it. A shadowy geometrical confusion in which could be seen elements of familiar things and most unfamiliar and perturbing combinations. There was a suggestion of queerly disordered pictures superimposed one upon another. An arrangement in which the essentials of time as well as of space seemed dissolved and mixed in a most illogical fashion. In this kaleidoscopic vortex of fantastic images, Thanks huge. Snapshots, if one might use the term, is it growing? Newness, yes. It's definitely growing. Yeah. Okay. Look at. I can it. see that it's growing. It's taking up like most of the sky now, and before it was like when we started, it was just like a small oval. Somebody asked if these pillars are growing also, and I I'm not sure about that. It oh, seems fuck. like they might be. That shot of you running towards the pillars with their silhouettes against the sky is one of the best things I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Fuck. There's definitely more pillars than there were at the start. I don't know if they're getting taller or not. Um. All right. Coming up on another narration thing. Right now. I felt in my visions a cosmic and abysmal loneliness, with hostility surging from all sides upon some prison where I lay confined. I seemed bound and gagged and taunted by the echoing yells of distant multitudes who thirsted for my blood. My uncle's face came to me with less pleasant associations than in waking hours, and I recall many futile struggles and attempts to scream. It was not a pleasant sleep, and for a second I was not sorry for the echoing shriek which clove through the barriers of dream and flung me to a sharp and startled awakeness in which every actual object before my eyes stood out with more than natural clearness and reality. Okay, moving right into another one. Above the anthropomorphic patch of mold by the fireplace of rose, a subtle, sickish, almost luminous vapor which as it hung trembling in the dampness seemed to develop vague and shocking suggestions of form, gradually trailing off into nubulous decay and passing up into the blackness of the great chimney with a fader in its wake. It was truly horrible, and the more so to me because of what I know of the spot. Refusing to flee, I watched it fade, and as I watched, I felt that it was in turn watching me greedily with eyes more imaginable than visible. Oh. <sighs> Look at this. Um, what is happening, Phil? I don't know. Um, don't be there. That's a bad another narration. On my ears rang the reverberations of that shocking scream, while my nostrils revolted at the stench which filled the place. My mind, as alert as my sense, recognized the gravely unusual and almost automatically I leapt up and turned about to grasp the destructive instruments which we had left trained on the moldy spot before the fireplace. As I turned, I dreaded what I was to see, for the scream had been in my uncle's voice and I knew not what menace I should have to defend him and myself. Man, this is super rad. Uh, Connor, in the chat, I, I would be curious, are you, uh, have, are you considering throwing this up on green Greenlight at all? Because this game is I, super cool, and I would love to get it to a bigger audience. <laughs> yeah, I okay. totally missed it. I, I think I think my mic was muted when I said it, but uh, back when like those pillars looked really aggressive. Like, yeah. they were just yes. shapes coming out of there. They were like the most ag aggressive shapes I've ever seen. Yeah. I feel I just got in the stream to where lightning hit again, and you like do a little jump. Yeah, and like it seems really perfectly involuntary. It was really good. Uh, here's another yeah, one. After all, the sight was worse than I had dreaded. There are horrors beyond horrors, and this is one of those nuclei of dreamable hideousness which the cosmos saves to blast an accursed and unhappy few. Out of the fungus-ridden earth steamed up a vaporous corpse light, yellow and diseased, which bubbled and lapped to a gigantic height in vague outlines half human and half monstrous, Jesus. in which I could see the chimney and fireplace beyond. Oh my god. It was all eyes, wolfish and mocking. And her ghost insect like head dissolved at the top to a thin stream of mist. Ooh, they're bending I now. I saw this thing, but it is only in conscious retrospection that I have ever definitely traced its damnable approach. To it's a drinking straw. It's just a soda drink in progress over now. <laughs> Power of unity. Fungus loathes this, enveloping and dissolving to an abhorrent plasticity with one object which all my attention was focused. Yeah, look at the less the aggressive shape. now. The shape is getting so big that it looks like it's getting lower to the ground, too. Because <laughs> it just extends so far. Maybe it is getting lower to the ground. Oh my 
god, this is like, I can almost not look, like, if I look at it, I hear that noise, and it's <laughs> almost to the point where I can't not look at it, so I'm oh, almost that's always be... hearing that noise. Oh, boy. Um, okay, here's here's one more narration starting now. In that dim blend of blue and yellow, the form of my uncle had commenced a nauseous liquefaction whose essence eludes all Music is so good. And in which there played across his vanishing face such changes of identity as only madness can conceive. He was at once a devil and a multitude, a charnel house and a pageant. Lit by the mixed and uncertain beams, the gelatinous face assumed a dozen, a score, a hundred aspects, grinning as it sank to the ground on a body that melted like tallow in the caricatured likeness of legions strange and yet not strange. Okay. Man. I wouldn't... Oh my god. It's not all... It's like changing colors, too. <laughs> Oh man, it's like matching the orange on the ground now, or that was on the ground. Okay, here's another one. The rest is shadowy and monstrous. There is no one in the world I dare tell. Grey dawn unfolded wetly from the east, silhouetting the archaic hill, beckoning me to the place where my terrible work was still unfinished. My mind was made up, and taking my hat, I set out from home, where I bathed, ate, and gave by telephone an order for a pickaxe, a spade, a military gas mask and six carboys of sulfuric acid, all to be delivered the next morning at the cellar door of the shunned house. Whoa. Oh shit. Oh, what is happening? Holy shit. Not like this. Not like this. Okay, like this. uh, narration now. At 11 a.m. the next day, I commenced digging. Oh my god. In the sunny weather, and I was glad of that. I was still alone, for as much as I feared the unknown horror I sought, there was more fear in the thought of telling anybody. My hands shook perceptibly, but still I delved after a while, standing in the large hole I had made. With the deepening of the hole, which is about six feet square, the evil smell increased, and I lost all doubt of imminent contact with the hellish thing whose emanations had cursed the house for over a century and a half. I wondered what it would look like. What its form and substance would be, and how big it might have waxed through long ages of life sucking. Suddenly, my spade struck something softer than earth. I shuddered and made a motion as if to climb out of the hole, which was now as deep as my neck. Wow. Okay. <coughs> the music is so good for this. It's so good. It's so good. I'm losing it. <laughs> I'm. I'm probably gonna buy this soundtrack. <laughs> oh, now look at. There's fog here. Is this creepy. Okay, here's yep. more narration right now. Yep. The surface I uncovered was fishy and glassy, a kind of semi-putrid congealed jelly which suggestions of translucency. The surface I uncovered was fishy and glassy, a kind of semi-putrid congealed jelly with suggestions of translucency. I scraped further and saw that it had form. There was a rift where part of the substance was folded over. The exposed area was huge and roughly cylindrical, like a mammoth blue white stovepipe doubled in Takes as the uh, center export dollars on my camp. Still more, I scraped, and then abruptly I left out of the God. hole and away from the filthy thing, frantically unstopping and tilting the heavy carboys and precipitating the corrosive contents one after another down the charnel gulf and upon the unthinkable, unnormality of the titan elbow I had seen. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's so much... Oh my god. You guys, I don't think... Oh god. Holy shit. Whoa. Well, well. I'm not sure well. if we finished that story or not. I Take think we were said, close. Ack bug. Uh, it started like so that that last that last bit of narration I got to started and then started again suddenly. Oh, weird. <laughs> Thomas says this looks like madness. Let's uh let's try and get the J Smith one. Somebody said it's the blue yep. one. So yeah, let's try and yeah. do that next. Sounds good. Okay, so blue so is what we're looking for. Right when we started, I I downloaded the game because it looked so cool, and then like 80% of the way through that, uh, it was so cool that I started downloading it again, having forgotten that I downloaded it <laughs> the first nice. time. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Is this blue? Yeah. Who can say? 
I can't yeah. say. What is blue? That looks lighter than Baby, blue. Baby, don't hurt me. Well, fuck. You know, we'll head in this direction, and we'll see what happens. Sounds good. Man, that ending was so rad! <laughs> that was really yeah, good. Was I'm really curious to see if there's different effects and stuff for different... Um, stories or what. Okay, blue's over here. I see it now. Okay, good. Did you, like Phil, white. did you ever... Yeah, it's definitely white. Did you ever get around to um, Way Too Scary Game? No, I, de I have not played that yet, even though I fucking paid for it to exist. That. Is Way Too Scary Game a horror game? <laughs> yes. Sort yeah. of. Um, yeah, it... Because it, <sighs> it, it, the name implies that it should be, but probably isn't. No, it is, but it's it's a sort of... I don't want to say... There's no... It's not like it's ironic, um, but it's... like It maintains a sense of seriousness, um, and... But it also has sort of the charm and and quirk of something like the Yogg, um, where everything's kind of, like, melancholy and, uh, you know, a, a little a little tilted. Um it isn't okay. jump scary. It's existential scary. Okay. Like my life. Yep. Bill, that's like the third oh, sad awesome. thing that you've said tonight. The third what? <laughs> the third really sad thing you've said I'm tonight. shocked I've only said three. Uh, Connor in the chat says that he's uh, collaborating with Cameron Kunzelman, uh, a way too scary game, for his next game. I'm really excited for that. Because that will be great. Most Just thing like, in the world, okay. I think is the inability of the human mind to correlate all of its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. But someday, piecing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or will flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. I shall never knowingly supply a link in so hideous a chain. I think that the professor too intended to keep silent regarding the part that he knew and that he would have destroyed oh, the his notes says, and not The next game is going to be time. like this game with Receiver and Proteus and that sounds amazing. Um, I, love, I love Receiver but I don't think I know what Proteus is. You should look that up. Here's another okay. narration. It's My cool. knowledge of the thing yeah. began in the Is this the guy's voice that we were looking for? Yeah. With the death of my granduncle, George Gamble Angel, Professor Emeritus of Semitic Languages in Brown University, Providence, Rhode Island. Professor Angel was widely known as an authority on ancient inscriptions and had frequently been resorted to by the heads of prominent museums. So this passing at the age of 92 may have still been recalled by many. Are we still in narration for yes. As my grand uncle's okay. heir and executor, for he died a childless widower, I was expected to go over his papers with some thoroughness, and for that purpose, moved his entire set of files and boxes to my quarters in Boston. We're gonna go right into another one. Okay, that's fine. The first half of the principal manuscript told a very peculiar tale. It appears that on March 1st, 1925, a thin, dark young man of neurotic and excited aspect had called upon Professor Angel, bearing a singular clay boss relief, which was then exceedingly damp and fresh. His card bore the name of Henry Anthony Wilcox, and he called himself psychically hypersensitive. The sculptor abruptly asked for the benefit of the host's archaeological knowledge in identifying the hieroglyphics on the boss relief. He said, It is new indeed, for I made it last night in a dream of strange cities. And dreams are older than brooding Tyre, or the contemplative Sphinx, or the garden-girdled Babylon. Hmm. Uh, I gotta say, um, Josh is reading fucking great. Yeah, it's really good. Way, yeah. way, way, way better than I than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. Because you know, usually I think J. Smith OTI, I think you know, scumbag, no talent, 
Right. Um, <laughs> Scumbag J. Smith. Yeah. Right. I don't know where the next blue thing is, though. So that's that's where we're at right now. So if you guys see a blue thing, let me know. Are those big, wide obelisks different than the ones that were there before? Seems, Did we see those before? They seem to be different. I don't know if it's just a different area. Right. right. Or if it's a different thing. They're great. Crossley says behind you. Well, and yet this is... Uh, I don't know what that a means. Bridge, a bridged Call of Cthulhu. Um, is the story that, that Jason is reading. No, uh, he, Frostly also says it's red now. Red is a different story. There's the blue one. God, those thunder jumps. And okay. the color in this fucking game is just so good. Here we go with narration now. It was then that he began that rambling tale, which suddenly played upon a sleeping memory and won the fevered interest of my uncle. There had been a slight earthquake tremor the night before, and the most considerable felt in New England for some years, and Wilcox's imagination had been keenly affected. Upon retiring, he had the unprecedented dream of great cyclopean cities, of titan blocks and sky-flung monoliths all dripping with green ooze and sinister with latent horror. Hieroglyphics had covered the walls and pillars, and from some undetermined point below came a voice that was not a voice. A chaotic sensation which only fancy would transmute into sound, but which he attempted to render by the almost unpronounceable jumble of letters. I think... Oh, man, this is so cool. I think what I like about this is that it gets the, the dread of Lovecraft... Mm -hmm in a way that that games so rarely do because you know yeah. even games that try to do lovecraft it's always like at some point they need to like they show the monster right or they're like yeah yep it's yeah. like a it's like a dread hidden behind a layer of like a professor writing uh, an essay yeah. yeah okay let's do another Average narration people in society and business new england's traditional Whoa. salt of the earth gave an almost completely negative result those scattered cases of uneasy but formless nocturnal impressions appear here and there, always between March 23rd and April 2nd, the period of young Wilcox's delirium. Scientific men were modestly affected, but it was from the artists and the poets that pertinent answers came, and I know that panic would have broken loose had they been able to compare notes. As was lacking in their original letters, I half suspected the compiler of having asked leading questions or of having edited the correspondence in corroboration of what he had latently resolved to see. So what I'm what I'm seeing from this one, now that we're doing a second story, is it seems like one of two things is happening. Either this, the path you choose is changing mm -hmm. what happens, like what how the world shifts, or right. it's it's pushing you in a different direction on the map. Like I can't tell if that's the case. It might just be pushing me in a direction that has different stuff. Because, like, look at this shit coming up. I've never seen anything like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. Um, okay, here's another narration. From the it's like a, a giant comb. From February <laughs> but, but terrifying. To April 2nd, a large proportion of them had dreamed very bizarre things. The intensity of the dreams being immeasurably stronger during the period of the sculptor's delirium. Over a fourth of those who reported anything reported scenes and half sounds not unlike those which Wilcox had described. And some of the dreamers confessed acute fear of the gigantic nameless thing visible towards the last. I swear these trees are like moving as I move. Mm -hmm. They're like shifting. I can't tell if I'm making that up. <laughs> They're ants. They're watching you. That's that's appropriate though. Not knowing. Yeah. Tag Tag Fifty Five is laughing at the giant comb joke, but he's only laughing because. It's actually the 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 free comb asset in. <laughs> that's what he, he just. <laughs> uh, that would be the actual best thing. Uh, okay, here's another narration starting now. His name was John Raymond Legrasse, and he was by profession an inspector of police. With him, he bore the subject of his visit, a grotesque, repulsive, and apparently very ancient stone statuette 
whose origin he was at a loss to determine. It must not be fancied that Inspector Legrasse had the least interest in archaeology, and on the contrary, his wish for enlightenment had prompted by purely professional considerations. The statuette, idol, fetish, or whatever it was, had been captured some months before in the wooded swamps of South New Orleans during a raid of a supposed voodoo meeting, and so singular and hideous were the rites connected with it that the police could not but realize that they had stumbled on a dark cult totally unknown to them and infinitely diabolic. Man, look at this fucking thing. Mm-hmm. It's gigantic. Yeah. I think that if you're just in a different area of the map, you would have seen that from a distance. From a distance, yeah. I yeah, feel totally like it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's this. It's so huge. Scale, again, is such a great thing about this. Oh, Frostly points out, uh, Total Biscuit was streaming Long Live the Queen today. Northern Lion put up a Long Live the Queen. Let's look at... Fucking, listen. <laughs> I'm just mm -hmm. saying... Hashtag wonder where they got those ideas. Alright, uh, we're jumping into this next narration. There were legends of a hidden lake unglimpsed by mortal sight, in which dwelt a huge, formless, white, pulpous thing with luminous eyes. And squatters whispered that bat-winged devils flew up out of the caverns in the inner earth to worship it at midnight. They said it had I can hear the stream on someone's... Too. Before LaSalle, before the Indians, and before even the wholesome beasts and birds of the woods. It was a nightmare itself, and to see it was to die. Are we still mid? But it made yep. men Eric dream, too. and so they knew enough to keep away. Okay. The weird thing is, when I mute both the stream and no one is talking, I hear a very unnerving wind, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Do you think that just like outside the wind?" No, it's not in. It's not in. It's not out the window. I want to lock the door, but I don't think that would help. Uh, Btalk92 asks, "This is on Unity? Yes, it is. This is this is Unity." Oh man, it's getting bigger again. All right, entering. I love it. Oh, sorry. How, I love how slowly it it gets bigger, so that we were wondering for the entire time whether it was actually getting bigger or not. Gaslighting. Uh, entering the uh, <laughs> entering the narration now. Only poetry or madness could do justice to the noises heard by Lagrasse's men as they plowed on through the black morass are toward the red glare in the muffled tom toms. There are vocal qualities peculiar to men, and vocal qualities peculiar to beasts, and it is terrible to hear the one when the source should yield the other. Animal fury and orgiastic license here whipped themselves into demonic heights by howls and squawking ecstasies that tore and reverberated through those nighted woods like pestilential tempests from the gulfs of hell. Holy shit, look at... Look how high up that goes. That goes as high up as you can go. Does this game take place in Canada? Is this Final Sacrifice? <laughs> look at this giant... Wait, is this what Canada looks like? I've never been. Yeah, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's just weird geometric shapes all over. <laughs> That's essential for healthcare. Um, yeah. Okay, here's another another. They worshipped. Whoa. So they said the great Holy old ones shit. who lived ages yeah. before there were any men, and who came to oh. the young world out of the sky. Those old ones were gone now, inside of the earth and under the sea, but their dead bodies had told their secrets and dreams to the first men. Who formed a cult which had never died. This was that cult, and the prisoners said it has always existed and always would exist, hidden in distant wastes and dark places all over the world until the time when the great priest Cthulhu from his dark house in the mighty city of Relay under the water should rise and bring the earth again beneath his sway. Someday, he would call, when the stars were ready and the secret cult would always be waiting oh, to glow. Is so good. Yeah, the lighting and all right, going right into the next narration. These great old ones were not composed altogether of flesh and blood. They had shape, for did not this star-fashioned image prove it? But that shape was not made of matter. When the stars were right, they could plunge from world to world through the sky. But when the stars were wrong, they could not live. They all lay in stone houses in the great city of Relay preserved by the spells of mighty Cthulhu for a glorious resurrection when the stars and the earth might once more be ready for them. 
but at that time, some force from outside must serve to liberate their bodies. The spells that preserved them intact likewise prevented them from making an initial move, and they could only lie awake in their dark and think, whilst uncounted millions of years rolled by. Even now they talk in their tombs. When, after infinities of chaos, the first men came, the great old ones spoke to the sensitive among them by molding their dreams. For only thus could their language reach the fleshy minds of mammals. Um, this is reminding me that Call of Cthulhu is a really good story. Also, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tag in the chat says, speaking of Canada, um, we're lousy with Cyclopean cities. <laughs> Moore's D says, yeah, I have to ignore any and all Euclidean geometries when I go to work. Holy shit. <laughs> I just got to the bit where you, there was like that crazy shockwave. Yeah. That was crazy. Also earlier, you saying holy shit lined up with you previously saying Perfect. holy shit. It was really good. All according to plan. God, yeah, so this is like a different color. It's getting blue now. Mm -hmm. Is it also a different, it looks And it look longer. looks like it's connecting with these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks more like... Holy shit. It looks this so is good. so fucking cool. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is the best. This is the best. Okay, here's, here's another bit of narration now. I shall never sleep calmly again when I think of the horrors that lurk ceaselessly behind life in time and in space. And of those unhallowed blasphemies that form elder stars which dream beneath the sea known and favored by a nightmare cult ready and eager to loose them onto the world whenever another earthquake shall heave their monstrous stone city again to the sun and the air I think that might be the end in which case I don't think we have time to like even get remotely progress progress through another story so I think we should just go explore these giant fucking pillars over here look at this thing this is the best. It That's seems so more cool. like it has like a shape now, like uh -huh. it has like like a like a mm -hmm. dimension to it. Before where, before it, it was kind looks, of like a cloud, but now it's like it looks really close to you. Like it looks like yeah. you could touch it. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Like it, it looks look, like it got bigger and lower. But it also looks like it's really far away, and that's a really weird effect. Yeah, because it's like it's in the sky. So there's no real like we know it's below the clouds because mm -hmm. we can see the clouds right. above it. That's all that we know. Like, oh, it's, yeah, Tech says that was the last one for for Call of Cthulhu. Look at this thing. What is this? Is the best. We can just watch it. You can see it moving now. Yeah. That's awesome. A DC Overdose wants to know what this is. This is, uh... The Rapture is here, and you will be forcibly removed from your homes. Um, I'll paste a link in chat. It is a free game um, with stories based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Or abridging. Abridged from the, mm -hmm. the works of H.P. Lovecraft. I guess it's Mac more than Windows, based on. I think, because Unity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can play it in the browser, even. Yeah. Yeah. Doc says, this is the reason I love video games. It's pretty cool. Okay, now it is back to orange-red again, but look at how green the ground is. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. It's, yeah, it's, like, so blown out with the green. <laughs> <And laughs> it's so the cool. Yellow. It's so cool. Man. Thanks to uh, oh, man. thanks I, to everybody I, in the chat who's posting those links. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. It bums me out that so few games mess with scale like this, especially in yeah. order to make you, uh, you know, unused. Um, I love how the everything starts shaking like this. Mm -hmm. It's so oh, it's so yeah. unnerving. It's so cool. The closest thing I can think of are at the very beginning of Mass Effect 1 and the very end of Mass Effect 1 when Sovereign is on screen. Um, and that's appropriate because that's also just that's also Lovecraft, right? Like yeah. they're also doing that. And this does that better because it's more abstract and, and less of just a giant squid. Um, but still vaguely squid-like. Like 
when the giant <laughs> cone reached up up to the body of the thing, it's like, yeah, no, that could be, yep, sure, sure. That's what a madman might say about that. Wait, that it's a comb? A madman might say it's a comb? Or that that it looks like it has t- tendrils or tentacles coming oh, okay, out of yeah, it. Sure. Connor, you made a super cool thing. <laughs> Good hustle yeah, up there, great. champ. Yeah. Oh, this is so, like... <laughs> I love this. Hashtag excited Phil. I just love the, like, the way it builds up with the music and with everything going on visually. Like, it all comes together so fucking perfectly. Yeah, the soundtrack is just the best. Um, and that's, I think, part of what I'm liking about this is it's 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 using all the parts. Remember when I was like, oh, there's some wind happening? Whoa. Yeah. Uh, I have the game open in a window and the other <laughs> in the other window, and I'm just hearing the title screen wind, and I'm freaking out about it. It explains a lot. Uh, John Carson in the chat says, "Scale is the next thing developers need to work on." There are very few times I'm in awe. This is done well. Connor says, "This was my learn how to use <laughs> Unity slash code game." You fucking cool. You nailed it, yeah. man. Yeah, totally I totally nailed it. If this is your learning game, I am excited to see what you do as you create more. And still, like, where where are the shapes? What even are those? I don't know. Um, like, there's a fucking thing, and it gets bigger. <laughs> and what is it? We played it twice, and what is it? So we've, awesome. we've done the Shunt House and the Call of Cthulhu. Let's uh, mm-hmm. let's go for one of the other ones. Shadow Out of Time and Color Out of Space are the two that we have left. What colors are those? So we've done blue and we've done red yellow? Red and white, probably, right? Yeah, red we need white. red and white. Um, Sounds good. So this time I'll head towards white. Gormania says, I'm currently doing a learn how to use Game Maker game for fun, but I just want to burn it to the ground. I would honestly say, like, from everything I've heard, you know, speaking with no no knowledge as an actual game developer, but from everything right. I've heard from people who do game development, I would just fucking drop Game Maker and move to Unity. Like, everybody says that Unity is better, but also still mm-hmm. easy to learn. And everything that I've heard about Game Maker is that it's it's really hard to make anything worthwhile from it. Yeah. Okay, white is shadow out of time, so that's what we'll we'll do this. Okay, sounds good. Uh, here's narration. Had I, in full hideous fact, been drawn back to a pre-human world of 150 million years ago, in those dark, baffling days of the amnesia? Had my present body been the vehicle of a frightful, alien consciousness from paleogean gulfs of time? Had I, as the captive mind of those shambling horrors, indeed known that accursed city of stone and its primordial Hades? and wriggle down those familiar corridors in the lonesome shape of my captor? Were those tormenting dreams of more than 20 years ago the offspring of stark, monstrous memories? Uh, generic username says the color choices in this are better than the color choices in Mass Effect 3. <laughs> um, okay, here's another, another narration by this weird, creepy... Rock formation. Need Stonehenge. Name is yeah. Nathaniel Wingate Feasley, and those who recall the newspaper tales of a generation back, or the letters and articles in psychological journals six or seven years ago, will know who and what I am. The press was filled with the details of my strange amnesia in 1908 until 1913. All right, uh, moving right into the next narration right here. It was on Thursday, May 14th, 1908, that the queer amnesia came. The thing was quite sudden, though later I realized that certain brief, glimmering visions of several hours previous, chaotic visions which disturbed me greatly because they are so unprecedented, must have formed premonitory symptoms. My head was aching, and I had a singular feeling, altogether new to me. Someone I like this guy's narration a lot. Possession of my thoughts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His voice is really good. AM, I slumped down, unconscious, in my chair in a stupor from which no one could arouse me. Nor did my rightful faculties again look out upon the daylight of our normal world for five years, four months, and thirteen days. It is, of course, from others that I've learned what followed. Um, I think all of them have been very good so far, and Mm -hmm. it it kind of surprises me, because I think, I mean, um, Connor can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe none of these people are professional voice actors by any means. Um... So I'm very, very impressed with these thus far. 
Uh, all right, here's another narration. At 3 a.m., May 15th, my eyes opened and I began to speak. But before long, the doctors and my family were thoroughly frightened by the trend of my expression and language. It was clear that I had no remembrance of my identity and my past, though for some reason I seemed anxious to conceal this lack of knowledge. My eyes gazed strangely at the persons around me, and the flexions of my facial muscles were altogether unfamiliar. Even my speech seemed awkward what and foreign. The fuck? I used my vocal organs clumsily and gropingly, and my diction had a curiously stilted quality, as if I had laboriously learned the English language from books. The pronunciation was barbarously Jeez. alien, whilst the idiom seemed to include both scraps of curious we got new and shapes. Crazy, yep. expressions of a wholly incomprehensible cast. The thing that's shirts are cool because they're like huge and right in your face. The thing that's mm -hmm. freaking me out is I'm pretty sure I like I'm pretty sure I literally just ran in this direction and there was nothing there. Yep. And then we got that thing and turned around and these are all here. Yep. In your Next way. Next time you should run backwards. I guess. Or when I play it, I'm gonna play it and run backwards and watch them <laughs> emerge. Uh, Connor says two of them are YouTubers. One is my brother, and one is a theater major slash actress. So that's probably the closest one you'd have to like a professional voice person. I guess YouTubers kind of counts, but it's different reading a story and talking in a YouTube video. Um, okay, it's here's not really. It kind of is. Here's here's another narration. The essence was always the same. A person of keen thoughtfulness, seized with a strange secondary life, and leading for a greater or lesser period. An utterly alien existence, typified at first by vocal and bodily awkwardness, and later by a wholesale acquisition of scientific, historic, artistic, and anthropological knowledge. An acquisition carried on with a feverish zest and with a wholly abnormal absorptive power. Then a sudden return of the rightful consciousness, intermittently plagued ever after with vague, unplaceable dreams suggesting fragments of some hideous memory elaborately blotted out. Uh, John Carson in the chat asked what the different colored lights are. They're, each one is a different story. Um, and you keep, keep going to the same color to progress that story. Callistman222 uh, is the other YouTuber. So if anybody wants to check him out, that's C-A-L-I-S-T-M-A-N-222. Um, Connor says he does a sweet Mountain Blade LP, which that sounds pretty fucking oh, cool. Rad. That sounds like a game yeah. that's great for LPing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here's another narration bit. I come now to the crucial and most difficult part of my narrative. All the more difficult because I cannot be quite certain of its reality. At times I feel uncomfortably sure that I was not dreaming or deluded. And it is this feeling, in view of the stupendous implications which the objective truth of my experience would raise, which impels me to make this record. Uh, John Carson also says, This is my first exposure to Lovecraft because I'm sheltered and uncultured. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think hearing bits of Lovecraft for the first time. <laughs> and Keith points out correctly that it's practically free on Kindle. Um, okay, here's another narration. Primal myth and modern delusion join in their assumption that mankind is the only one, perhaps the least, of the highly evolved and dominant races of this planet's long and largely unknown career. Things of inconceivable shape, they implied, had reared towers to the sky and delved into every secret of nature before the first amphibian forebear of man had crawled out of the hot sea 300 million years ago. Some had come down from the stars, a few were as old as the cosmos itself, and others had arisen swiftly from three germs as far behind the first germs of our life cycle as those germs are behind ourselves. Spans of thousands of millions of years and linkages to other galaxies and universes were freely spoken of. <laughs> Indeed, there is no such thing as time in its humanly accepted sense. Um, we're going to move right into the next one. Uh, right now. But most of the tales and impressions concern a relatively late race of a queer and intricate shape resembling no life form known to science which had lived till only 50 million years before the advent of man. This they indicated was the greatest race of all because it alone had conquered the secret of time. It had learned all things that ever were known or ever would be known on the earth. 
through the power of its keener minds to project themselves into the past and future, even through gulfs of millions of years, and study the lore of every age. From the accomplishments of this race arose all legends of prophets, including those in human mythology. You can you can you you can check out Lovecraft for one to eight ducks right now on Kindle. That's what Keith told me. Yep. Sometimes typing's hard. Sometimes um, when your mic is in front of your keyboard and you can't see stuff. <laughs> here's, here's D another. isn't even near B. Here's another one. With this no, but I wasn't here's a, looking. Sh- sh- the great race chose from every era and oh. life form such thoughts, arts, and processes as might suit its own nature and situation. Knowledge of the past, secured through a kind of mind casting outside the recognized senses, was harder to glean than knowledge of the future. In the latter case, the course was easier and more material. With suitable mechanical aid, the mind would project itself forward in time, feeling its dim, extrasensory way until it approached the desired period. Then, after preliminary trials, it would seize on the best discoverable representative of the highest of that period's life forms. It would enter the organism's brain and set up therein its own vibrations, while the displaced mind would strike back to the period of the displacer, remaining in the latter's body till a reverse process was set up. The projected mind, in the body of the organism of the future, would then pose as a member of the race whose outward form it wore, learning as quickly as possible all that could be learned from the chosen age and its massed information and techniques. Guys, don't tell ADC overdose that I haven't played Eternal Darkness. Going back to the displacer's age and body, will be drained of all its knowledge by trained questioners. Eh. I thought Eternal Darkness of the Spotless Mind was a really overrated movie. Fucking Keith. Mm. The great race's members were immense, okay, rugose cones ten feet high, and with head and other organs attached a foot thick, distensible limbs spreading from the apexes. They spoke by the click and scraping of huge paws or claws attached to the end of the two of their forelimbs and they walked by the expansion and contraction of a viscous layer attached to their vast, ten-foot bases. When the captive's mind's amazement and resentment had worn off, and when, assuming that it had come from a body vastly different from the great races, it had lost its horror and unfamiliar temporary form, it was permitted to study its new environment and experience a wonder and wisdom approximating that of its displacer. These things are getting real big. Is this one growing out? Whoa. Do you see this? Oh, it's going through it. Uh, uh, so cool. Yeah, that thing was super thin earlier, like when yep. you were... And now it is the f- tallest shit there is. Okay, here's another narration. Snatches of what I read and wrote would linger in my memory. There were horrible annals of other worlds and other universes, and of stirrings of formless life outside of all universes. There were records of strange orders of beings which had peopled the world in forgotten pasts, and frightful chronicles of grotesque-bodied intelligences which should people it millions of years after the death of the last human being. All right, here's another another narration right now. I learned, even before my waking self had studied the parallel cases or the old myths from which the dreams doubtless sprang, that the entities around me were of the world's greatest race, which had conquered time and sent exploring minds into every age. I knew too that I had been snatched from my age while another used my body in their own, and that a few of the other strange forms have similarly captured minds. I seemed to talk in some odd language of claw clickings with exiled intellects from every corner of the solar system. God, can I get through here? Okay, yeah, the thing's right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. That feels real dangerous, though, Phil. I'll just go up here. Yep, that's safe. Good. Glad you're touching the the alien architecture. Yep. All right, here I'm gonna jump into this, so we'll start yeah. the narration now. After man, there would be the mighty beetle civilization, the bodies of whose members the cream of the great race would seize when the monstrous doom overtook the elder world. 
Later, as the Earth's span closed, the transferred minds would again migrate through time and space to another stopping place in the bodies of the bulbous vegetable entities of Mercury. But there would be races after them, clinging pathetically to the cold planet and burrowing to its horror-filled core before the other end. are talking about jump scares of which this game doesn't really have any no but it did just mention the beetle people who would come after the humans and you know what i'm, I'm glad i'm glad we'll all be gone by the time the beetle people ascend it's racist but okay speciesist well no they in the future they become a race Skagler says lightning okay. nature's jump scare uh here's another narration right uh right now the great race itself wax well nigh omniscient Whoa. And turn to the task of My setting up exchanges with holy the shit. Of the planets and of exploring their pasts and futures. It sought likewise to fathom the past years and origins of the black, eon dead orb in far space whence its own mental heritage had come. For the mind of the great race was older than its bodily form. The beings of a dying elder world, wise with the ultimate secrets, had looked ahead for a new world and species wherein they might have long life and sent their minds en masse into that future race best adapted to house them, the cone-shaped beings that peopled our Earth a billion years ago. And thus the great race came to be, while the myriad minds sent backwards were left to die in the horrors of strange This shapes. is great. This Later, is really the race good. Would again face death, yet would live through another forward migration of its best minds into the bodies of those who had a longer physical span ahead of them. I, I don't- am I supposed to be in here? I hope. Actually, I maybe I don't even hope. Maybe this is out. I don't. I don't know if I am. I supposed to be in here? Oh, this is the best. Connor, am I this supposed to be so in here? Good. I, I can't tell. I. What's up, Phil? Oh God! Oh yeah, I see. I Jesus can hear it. Christ. I can hear it. Oh man! Even though I'm here, I can hear it. Um, what? That's so cool. Uh, I don't. Oh God. Texas, that you are supposed to be here. <laughs> that that's it's good to know. Uh, Wait, is that a way out? This is fucking cool and terrifying. I yeah, love how different this is from this every is other fucking story. Cool. This is really good that this is so different from yeah. every other story. You know, good good first effort. You know, good, good job out there. <laughs> Just really good. good. You know. Holy shit. An exit. Oh my god. That was fucking rad. <laughs> that was totally rad. I almost didn't really expect to get out of there. <laughs> Can you look behind you and look at the thing that you were just in? Yeah, it's just like oh, a giant black man. like... It's so good. That's so great. Oh, it's so good. All right, here's uh here's the uh the next narration fair. Largely civil for the last few millennia, though sometimes waged against reptilian or octopodic invaders or against the winged star-headed old ones who centered in the Antarctic. It was usually infrequent, though infinitely devastating. An enormous army using camera-like weapons which produced tremendous electrical effects was kept on hand for purposes seldom mentioned, but obviously connected with the ceaseless fear of the dark windowless elder ruins 
They have the great sealed trap doors and the lowest subterranean level. <laughs> All right, here's another narration now. According to these scraps of information, the basis of the fear was of a horrible elder race of half polypus, utterly alien entities which had come through space from immeasurably distant universes and had dominated the Earth and three other solar planets about 600 million years ago. They were only partly material as we understand matter. Their type of consciousness and media perception differed widely from those of terrestrial organisms. They have the power of aerial motion, despite the absence of wings or any other visible means of levitation. Their minds were of such a texture that no exchange with them could be affected by the great race. When these things had come to Earth, they built mighty basalt cities of windowless towers and preyed horribly upon the beings they found. Thus, it was when the minds of the great race sped across the void from that obscure, transgalactic world, known in the disturbing and debatable Elton shards as Yif. The newcomers with the instruments they created had found it easy to subdue the predatory entities and driven them down to those caverns of inner earth, which they had already joined to their abodes and begun to nap. But as the eons passed, it came away, evil signs of the elder things were growing strong. Fucking drums. There were sporadic eruptions of a particularly hideous character in certain small and remote cities of the Great Lakes. And some of the deserted elder cities which Phil, you gotta make it to the last one. I know. Places where Run. the path to the gulfs will have not been properly seen or guarded. Alright, we're going into it now. Great. The eruptions of the other things have been shocking beyond all description, since they had permanently colored the psychology of the great Whoa. race. Such was the fixed mood of horror that the very aspect of the creatures were left unmentioned. At no time was I able to gain a clear hint of what they looked like. They were veiled suggestions of monstrous plasticity and of temporary lapses of visibility, while other fragmentary whispers referred to their control and military use of great winds. Singular whistling noises and colossal footprints made up of five circular toe marks seemed also to be associated with them. We're gonna make it. We're gonna do this. We're gonna make it. Okay, here we go. It was evident that the coming doom so desperately feared by the great race. The doom that was one day to send millions of keen minds across the chasm of time to strange bodies in the safe future had to do with the final successful eruption of the Elder Beings. <laughs> Mental projections down the ages had clearly foretold such a horror, and the great race had resolved that none who could escape it should face it. That the foray would be a matter of vengeance, rather than an attempt to reoccupy the outer world. They knew from the planet's later history for the projection show oh, no. the going of substance. Do it, Phil, you're so close. Monster entities. Indeed, no. it was known that they would be quite dead in the time of the post human beetle race, which the fleeing minds were tending. I'll never give up. Come on. Oh, this music is too good. Do it! Had I once veritably talked with minds from breaches corners of time and space, learned the universe's secrets, uh -oh. past and to come, and rid the anal. <laughs> kind of stop oh, mid story there. Man. The watching. Because we're doing the, the, the Skype screen share thing, right. and watching yours at a much lower frame rate than the uh -huh. Twitch thing makes it even crazier when the yes. end game happens. It does. Yeah. That's. This game's really good. I'm gonna play this game. Uh, so why don't I? Why don't we not do the fourth one? Just yeah, so that, like, if people are one. watching. Um, yeah, great. They can go check that out on their own. That's the red one. Is the one that we did. Uh, yes, that yeah, would be okay. the color out of space. Um, by Callistman, who uh, has a YouTube channel that everyone should also check out. This game is super fucking good. Yeah, that was yeah, great. Really um, was capital, I, capital G, great. Great work, Connor. I, I hope to uh, see what you do next, and I hope that you can maybe, maybe get this onto uh, Greenlight as well and stuff. I would uh, love to. Agree. I want, I want some trading cards. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> some, some Lovecraft trading cards. There was a period where I was, uh, I was like 17, and I was taking a class on post, like JFK assassination oh, conspiracy theories. He says the red one's the coolest one. I kind of want to. Uh, I won't do it. Sorry. Go on.
Uh, That'll make uh, people get it. Every yeah, day exactly. our bodies oh my God. are constantly yeah. bombarded by these invisible... Um, sorry, I clicked on the thing and it opened up the <laughs> YouTube channel and I started getting a YouTube ad. <laughs> so now we can't monetize this. Go on. For betas? Um, po- Post-JFK assassination conspiracy theories, watching, like, speed running through all of the X-Files episodes and reading lovecraft at the same time and so like mm-hmm. i have all this fucking crazy shit in my brain from the Associated. same like three months yeah and it's all right. tied in together it's pretty good yeah um yeah that was great think about think about what good emoticons you would get for the steam trading <laughs> cards in this game and i want a really i want a really cute cthulhu emoticon oh boy <laughs> i just um, want i want each card to be a different shape I want emoticons that when you do them, the other person, like, the emoticons spread out from the Steam chat into other opened windows that, that yep, the uh, yep, player has. Yep, this the, is all good. Person has. Uh, well, that's super cool. I hope you, you guys will go check that out. Again, the link is in the chat all over right now. Um, somebody, uh, Connor just posted it, I think, or he posted it somewhere in here. I, I don't know. Other people will post it in a second. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube... It will be in the info, and you guys should go play this and go do the uh, do the fourth story on your own, and maybe check out some of the other ones without any like random interruptions or anything because they're super cool. Right, right here, Phil. God. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I think that's gonna be it. I think we'll stop for the night. Um, my name is Phil Kohler. twittercom slash Um You guys can find the archives of the stream once again at youtube.com slash kevkatarin and once again if you're watching on youtube and you would like to join us live that's twitch.tv slash kevkatarin what about you guys i'm austin walker you can find me on twitter at austin underscore walker on twitch at the calcutech and at clockworkworlds.com uh, where I, I write stuff i just wrote about receiver um you guys should read that and I'm Janine Hawkins. I'm at Bleating Heart on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube. Um, and you can find my stuff at HealerArcherMage.com. I'm Keith Carberry. Uh, you can find my Let's Play videos at YouTube.com slash RunButton. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Something Dumb. Cool. Um, I think uh, at some point later this week, I'm going to try to do uh, what I would like to do. Austin and Janine, if you guys are up for it is uh, get back to Long Live the Queen. We have some yeah. unfinished br- business. I wanna, I'm, I'm going to come in prepared. <laughs> we're going to jump in and do some... Um, All right. We're going to do some runs specifically geared at getting certain endings. Um, Sounds good. So that's that's the plan, and then maybe follow that up with some Remember Me after that. Uh, so Hi. look forward to that later in the week. Um, and in the meantime, I hope all of you have a, uh, a wonderful start to your week and a good night. Thanks for watching.